you've read the question and you've tried it. First thing, of course, is to write down our givens. We need to understand, hopefully you understand, that there are three parts of the question. The guy walks into the elevator and stands on the scale and it says 100 kilograms. That's not really the first part. That's just obviously what's going to happen because when you walk into an elevator, it's not moving. When you walk into an elevator, it's at rest, which means acceleration is zero, normal force and gravity can be balanced. Okay, so what am I getting at here? Well, initially the velocity of the elevator is zero. So that's really easy to understand. Let's just throw in some of the givens that we have. We also, of course, need to draw a free body diagram of the guy on the elevator. Is there gravity acting on the person? Of course there is. At G, which is going to be 9.8 times 100, which is hopefully 980 newtons. Other forces on the dude? Simply the elevator pushing up the normal force. And we don't know what that is. It's going to change from time to time. I'm going to call up the positive x direction. This is my free body diagram. It's going to be good for the whole question because the different sections are going to have different accelerations. They're going to have different values for some of these forces, but there's going to be no other forces on the guy. So normal force, gravity, that's all I need to worry about. Uh, I also probably understand that the normal force is going to be the one that's changing and gravity is going to be the same because he's on Earth and not really changing his altitude by a significant amount. Okay, so let's get back to our givens here then for a second. The initial velocity of the elevator is zero. So the guy walks in, the scale says 100. Then the scale reads, what, 105 for a certain amount of time? And then it reads 100 again, and then it reads, well, we don't know what it reads, but it's going to change. So there's three parts to the question. The elevator starts at rest and goes up to a speed V2. We don't know what it is, but let's call it V. What we do hopefully understand is that if the elevator accelerates up to a speed of V and then maintains that speed for a while, that velocity in part two will also be V. The elevator is at some point then going to obviously slow down to stop to let the guy off, so V1 from part three is also going to be V. Let's put some of the givens in. I think it's 10 seconds that it's accelerating for. I believe it's 20 seconds, 12 seconds, that it goes at a constant rate, and then it takes another 12 seconds to slow down. The displacement of it during each one, I'm going to call them D1, I'm going to call it D2, and I'm going to call it D3. The question was also asking for the total displacement, so I'm just going to add up D1, D2, and D3 when I'm done the question. But first, I've got to figure out what's the scale going to read during part three. So we obviously need to understand a few things. I don't know the acceleration here. If I had the acceleration, then I could find the V and I would know all these Vs. So I'm going to try to find the acceleration. So in part A, if I look over here at my free body diagram, the equation governing this is going to be Fn minus Fg equals Ma. No problem. In part A, we know that the scale reads 105 kilograms. Is that right? 105 kilograms. So the real question becomes, do you know what to do with that information? What does the scale read? It doesn't read Fg, because then it would have to be correct. It doesn't read a four uh, kilograms directly. It's not measuring the inertia. So it must be measuring a force. It's not measuring Fg. It must be measuring Fn. And that's, of course, why it makes them seem heavy. You feel heavier in an elevator because normal force is bigger than usual. And that's why you are accelerating up. And you feel a little bit heavy. But your force of gravity hasn't gone up. The Earth is still pulling down on you with the same force as it always does. So hopefully that makes some sense. We should write that down somewhere. In general, the mass according to the scale is going to be the normal force divided by 9.8. That's a little thing you need to understand to do the whole problem. The scale measures Fn. Technically, it measures the third law reaction force to Fn, but those are always equal. So it measures how hard it has to push up on you, which is, of course, the normal force. Then it assumes that the normal force is equal to gravity, which is not always true, and it therefore divides by 9.8. Okay? So it assumes that Fn equals Fg, and that's why the scale is so easy to manipulate. That's why the scale is going to lie to us here, because it's not reading Fg, it's reading Fn, and it's pretending, it's assuming that they're the same. You are smarter than a scale, you know they're not always the same. Okay, so let's actually get on with it, shall we? In part A, if we look at the equation of motion, we see that 
Fn minus Fg equals Ma, but we know from the mass of the scale it says 105, so we can figure out the normal force must be 105 times 9.8. Putting that in here, we can figure out that the acceleration must be 105 times 9.8 plus 980, all divided by 100, and we get an acceleration of 0.4. To help you guys follow at home, I believe this is 10.29. That's how I got 4.9 meters per second squared. So now I can go ahead and put that in 0 0.49 meters per second squared. It's positive, so it must be accelerating up. And we know it's accelerating up because the guy feels heavier, 105. Oh, he feels like he's being pushed down because the elevator is accelerating up. No problem. Now what is V2? Well, we don't know D for now. So we'll use equation that doesn't have D, number two. V2 equals V1 plus A delta T. Well, that's super simple. V1 is zero. 10 times 0.49 is 4.9 meters per second. So that's V2 or V. That's this speed. That's this speed. Okay, so we're just figuring out everything that we can. What we really want to know is what is the scale going to read over here in part three, right? Which means we need to find the normal force. So if we want to find the normal force, we need to find the accelerations. We know gravity, we need to find the acceleration. We can't find the acceleration in part three unless we know three things. V1, now we know, is 4.9. We know the time is 12, and I forgot again, V2, what's the final speed of the elevator? I believe it said in the question that it, how long does it take to come to a rest? How long does it come? How long does it take to stop? And of course, the guy's got to get off the elevator, which means it has to be at rest. So, one way or another, I hope we understand the velocity is zero. We'll use the same equation here: rearranged acceleration. I guess it's technically acceleration three equals v2 minus v1 over t 4.9. Oh, sorry, zero minus 4.9 over 12 seconds equals negative 0.41 meters per second squared, which means it's accelerating down. It's going up, but it's slowing down. It's accelerating down. Okay, good. That makes a lot of sense. When I put that into my equation for Fn, I can see that Fn must therefore be 100 times negative 0.41 plus 980. The normal force is therefore going to work out to be, what's that, 1021 if I'm not mistaken? 1021 newtons, which means that the mass, according to the scale, will be 1021 over 9.8, or about 104 kilograms. And good students will stop and think about that for a second. Does that make sense? He put on 5 kilograms when he accelerated up. He's only putting on four. Well, that can't be right. When he stops, he should be losing weight. So I've obviously made some kind of silly mistake here, haven't I? All right, let's see what it is. Probably a simple calculation error. Did I forget my negative? What is negative 41 plus 908? It's not 1,000. 939. All right, 939 newtons. Well, that makes more sense, so we'll divide that by 9.8 and we'll get 96. Okay, so you see firsthand the value of checking your answers, like on a test. Just the common sense thing. Does it make sense? He put on weight to accelerate it up. He should lose weight to slow down. First of all, yes, this number should be less than 100. This one was bigger. The second thing, the one I was initially trying to point out, is that he lost four kilograms here, whereas he gained five. Does it make sense that he gained more? And that's because the time it took to slow down was bigger than the time that it took to speed up. So his acceleration must have been bigger here. And it was, right? It was almost a half. He accelerated more. He put on five pounds. His acceleration here was only 0.4. It was only 80%. He only lost 80% of the weight that he put on. But he felt lighter for longer, and it all balances out. Hopefully that makes some sense. That's the answer to part A. Of course, it's only part A, but part B is really pretty straightforward, just some big five stuff, so we'll do it a little more quickly. Find D1, find D2, find D3, 
and add them together. No big deal. So let's see, D1. Easiest way to do this is probably to say V1 plus V2 over 2 times the time. So 4.9 over 2 times 10, which is basically 5 times 5, so just under 25, 24.5 meters. Okay, D2, that's just V times T. D2 equals 4.9 times 12, which is 29, no, 58.8. 58.8, that makes sense, just under 60 meters. Okay. And then D3, doesn't really matter, I'm going to use equation number 4 for D3. For D3, I'm going to say it's V2t, would be 2 is 0, minus a half a t squared. But of course, a is negative, isn't it? I'm not going to make that mistake twice. So negative and a negative should cancel out. My displacement will be simply a half times 0.41 times 12 squared, which will be positive 29.4. The elevator is going up, but it's accelerating down. Its displacement is still positive. So the total displacement of the elevator is 24.5 plus 58.8 plus 29.4, which is about 112.7 meters up. In the interest of significant figures, I should really write 1.1 times 10 to the 2 meters up.